Yo, what up, man? What up, YouTube? What's good, man? Long time no see. Long time no see. Man. A lot's been going on, man. But I'm only making this video, man, because... Because I just saw the Jerry McCoy uh, interview on on, uh, on the Skip and Shannon show. You know, Jerry McCoy finally, you know, he came out. Said a couple words, you know. I just want to talk about it, you know, because it's, it's, it's really important to me. Because uh, a lot of a lot of us Bucks fans, I'm going to say us because, you know, we're all Bucks fans and whatnot, but, you know, you know they've, been, they've been coming down on Jeremy McCoy. You know, he's gone now, so it's no big deal anymore. He's out, you know, but still, you know, he, in my opinion, he, he's, he's been one of our better players for, you know, for as long, most of the years he's been here. But you know, I feel I feel like I feel like um, after hearing his his you know his interview over there at the uh, Skip and Shannon show, uh, judging by what he was saying, you know, I I kind of kind of feel for him, and it's it sucks, you know, because he's not here anymore, and you know now we got Dominic and Dominic and Sue or not, uh, but. Like I said, hearing him, his side of the story and stuff, because nobody really said nothing, you know, what happened behind doors. You know, Bruce Arians or none of our staff has said anything. What's happened, you know, this is pretty much like the first glimpse that uh, that we've, we've heard. You know, Jeremy McCoy came out and said, you know, the team, he felt disrespect, disrespected by the team. The whole offseason, uh, Nobody contacted him. He only spoke to Bruce Arians probably like once or twice, I think. But he said nobody talked to him from, from the coaching staff at all. Nothing. Not the D-line. D-line coach, top holes. He said even Jason Light didn't speak to him. They didn't call him or nothing. All offseason. So, you know, basically making him feel like he was nothing. Like all he did, you know, was just nothing. So I, I understand, you know, Gerald's side of why, you know, he he wanted to leave and he felt like uh, the Bucks giving and Dominican Sue his number, like it was, you know, it was major disrespect. And you can find a he could he could kind of feel it, feel it in his voice and Gerald's voice, you know, that, that he's hurt. <laughs> he was hurt by that number. By the, uh, the Bucks giving him that number, they uh, giving the Dominican Sue 93. And like I said, I, I, I feel for him. I feel for him, man. Like, I know he's not on this team no more, and, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, we're moving forward. But I feel for him, man. And in me, if I was in his shoes, the way he went to Carolina, I would have did the same thing. I would have did the same thing. If I felt dis disrespected, even if the other team doesn't, doesn't feel like they disrespected you or not, but if I felt disrespected like they disrespected me, you can call me petty, you can call me bitch made, whatever. Oh yeah, I'm going to the division rival and I'm gonna make y'all feel it twice a season. But that's just me, I don't know. Uh, but like I said, man, yeah, he uh, Yeah, he just pretty much was saying, you know, the Bucks pretty much had him in the air, like you know, like he like he was nothing, like uh, pretty much this new regime, you know. Like I said, I felt horrible for him, but but it was a good little interview. You know, he also spoke about Jameis Winston. You know, he said Jameis has finally, you know, this Jameis about to be his fifth year, and he has to finally, you know, grow up uh, or you know whatever, mature or whatever. But I feel like Jameis is gonna be pretty good. You know, I, I feel like he he's grown up after that last Uber mistake, that Uber mistake that he made. You know, it's. I think he grew up. He grew up from that place that happened years ago before he finally got punished for it or whatnot. But I feel like he's grown, and I feel like Jameis Jameis is a good enough quarterback, man, to to, to get this team to the playoffs. And uh, stat wise, I I believe Jameis is top. And I think this year, after this season is done, this upcoming season is done. I believe J Jameis is gonna be. Top five, maybe top three in yards, touchdowns. He might throw a couple of interceptions and stuff like that, but but it is what it is. That's what that's what Jameis comes with, you know. You just gotta tone it down a little bit. 
Yeah, he spoke on Jameis. He spoke on Deshaun Jackson. You know, he spoke good about Deshaun Jackson. You know, the usual, you know, his speed and stuff. And making, he makes Philly pretty much, you know, a little better team or whatnot. But, but yeah, y'all should go check it out, man. It was a good little interview. Jericho interview or whatnot. Uh, yeah, I know, I know it's a rare sighting that I'm on here. Because I know it's been a while. It's been a long time. Uh, and I know probably maybe one or two persons, people, maybe three people probably going to see this or whatnot. But it is what it is. Uh, just drop a little dime on that. But I'm about to be out, fellas. And I will see y'all in the future. Maybe I'll see y'all. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Maybe uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. I might. I'm going to a couple of Bucks games this season. Because, uh, yeah, I got more free time now. Now I get my, I, my old job. I didn't, I had to work on the weekends on Sundays and stuff. So, but now, you know, got a pretty good job Monday through uh, Fridays and stuff like that. So I got the weekends off and have more time. I, I can actually go to a couple of games and stuff like that, you know. I probably, you know, record a couple of things, you know, put it on YouTube and this and that, you know. Boom, boom, boom. If I catch y'all, I catch y'all. If I don't, I don't. But check out the interview, man. I'm out.